Okay, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Stan Posey from NVIDIA. Uh, I'll be presenting today the disruptive technology of the NVLink interconnect for GPUs. And uh, following the format, what is this disruptive technology? Well, despite the uh, potential bottlenecks that PCIe presents from the CPU to GPU interconnect that we've had over the years, GPU technology has still been uh, uh, widely successful by most people's uh, uh, beliefs. And we now have this interconnect, which brings the potential of, um, of, of, of new uh, application performance that hasn't been possible. Uh, this interconnect also provides alternatives to the current x86, which is the conventional processor used with GPUs. Uh, but this should get us somewhere in the 5x to 12x faster performance once it's implemented. Uh, this would include both GPU to GPU and CPU to GPU, all right? So the uh, CPUs and GPUs would also share data structures at CPU memory speeds, a very new approach than what we've had uh, for, for the um, entire history of GPUs, and then offer a simplified programming model as we move to applying this interconnect with uh, unified memory. Why is it disruptive? So, well, the benefits to the end users are uh, application performance. So what I show you in the chart there is simply the performance improvement that comes from the GPU to GPU communication, right? Uh, it's somewhere in the range of 2x versus PCI. Uh, that's something that doesn't necessarily require a lot of vendor support. Uh, certainly moving to the model of um, CPU to GPU with this interconnect would require much more uh, vendor uh, engineering and, and participation. Uh, and we have that with IBM and the Open Power Foundation. Uh, NVLink and Action will be appearing on the Coral systems in 2017. That's both the uh, Summit and Sierra systems. Uh, those have the potential for a range of 5 to 10x faster than the current Titan at Oak Ridge, if I uh, point out the Summit system characteristics. It'll be a fifth of the nodes. These are very dense nodes with uh, Open Power CPUs connected to GPUs through NVLink. And then we're going to have uh, a situation on the energy consumption that will be uh, virtually constant uh, as a result of these new technologies. And what are the market expectations for NVIDIA? Well, we certainly see GPU density increasing. I've got three examples here where today, with the current technology of 2015, uh, on a Crisia storm, you've got eight times K80. If you're familiar with K80, it's actually two GPUs on a single board. So you're talking about 16 devices on a single node. Uh, with the Dell system, that's four times the K80 on the HP uh, 8. So uh, we do see the density ramping up per node. Uh, interconnect speeds between the GPUs will be very important. We do have HPC vendors that you see on the list here who all support the uh, GPU to GPU, all right, everyone on that list currently. And then several of these support CPU to GPU, uh, namely those that would be uh, implementing the open power uh, processors, so IBM, Tyann. And then there's this one smaller vendor, uh, Quantum, who uh, has now an x86 available connected to the GPU through the NVLink. So we're very excited about this technology, and you'll be hearing more about it as it rolls out with our next generation architecture called uh, Pascal. Thank you. Great. Thanks very much. And Homer, do you have a question? Well, OK. Um, Stan. Um, you have on your previous slide, you have power and then a question mark. Um, with IBM's recent track record and HPC, do you see them as a reliable partner? And when are you going to put a name instead of the question mark? OK, I, uh, clearly I didn't go past this slide fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> but to answer your question, uh, uh, if you talk to IBM, and I'm very pleased to hear this from customers who talk to IBM independently of NVIDIA, uh, they'll let you know that a core part of their HPC strategy going forward is accelerators, and that's NVIDIA GPUs. So we're very pleased with the partnership there, working on uh, a number of applications. So I'm very confident that that's well in place. And, you know, the Coral program is driving a lot of that, right? It's going to benefit a lot of users who are at the smaller scale. But you ask about the question mark specifically. Uh, we're talking to a number of ARM64 vendors, because there's that opportunity to include that which we support that processor today. All of the processors, x86 power and ARM64, we support through PCI Express. And that will continue in our roadmap. There are customers who don't require the high-speed interconnect. The oil and gas seismic processing, for example, they don't need to, to buy it at that level, so they'll stay at PCIe. 
but there's opportunity with the ARM64 vendors to go um, and be link. And that's why the question mark is there, because we're having those discussions. Are, are you not an ARM licensee yourselves? Uh, I better not address that question, because there, there, I'm not clear on the latest update of where we stand on that or, or how our statements officially follow. But Steve, I know how to get in touch with you, so I will come back to you on that. Okay, addressing the questions that we've been asked, is, is this really disruptive? Uh, disruptive. I think it's a really nice technology. Disruptive is kind of an extreme uh, term for it. Who will likely be able to use it? Anybody who uses it, uh, Tesla or Kepler will definitely use it. Uh, you know, why not? And what can be done to bring it to the market sooner? You have a product plan, so it's you know it's all yeah. pretty pretty much set in, in place. So. Well, yeah, Jim, if I might, please. I, I see it disruptive in one way I didn't mention, and that is it provides an alternative to the x86 approach. And it actually gives an advantage to IBM because now they'll have a, uh, a data link that gives them an advantage over uh, applying x86. And, and a good example is a, is a hybrid code. And what I mean by hybrid code is, you know, I work with a lot of climate weather codes where the profile is very flat and you really need to get the entire model over to the GPU to get benefit. But if we have some of the models still sitting on the CPU and I'm now sending data at the same speed CPU goes to memory, now there's potential that these hybrid codes wouldn't have the bottleneck of data transfer that it once existed. Yeah. We haven't tested all that, but sorry. Yeah. Fair point. How uh, uh, disruptive or how much improved performance do you see in graph applications with the coupling of uh, the GPU and the large SMP uh, Power 9 uh, right. technology? Right, so, so Paul, yes, we, so for Coral, that will be Power9 plus Volta, that's been published. Uh, there we have projections, and they're just projections at the moment. Uh, they are public, we can share those, but we've not actually been able to do tests on actual applications of what we should expect on performance. Uh, the GPU to GPU that I showed, uh, that's, that's been completed, but uh, CPU to GPU, we're, we're still not able to test that with the current hardware infrastructure. So that, that'll, that'll be coming. Okay, thank you, Stan. Oh, thank you all.